Can you build an awesome gaming PC for only $700 here in 2024? Well, I think you can, but you should stick around and see if you agree with me. I'm gonna go over the parts I used for this build as well as some other alternatives that we thought about but we didn't go with and why, as well as benchmarking it in some of the best games here in 2024 at 1080p and 1440p. Now, 2024 PC prices leave us in a bit of a predicament where we're gonna have to use a combination of new and used parts. So for the CPU, I knew I needed to spend around $100 if I wanted pretty good performance in this $700 price range. However, the new CPU options were a little bit less than what I really wanted to do. For AMD, you have the Ryzen 5 5500 that you could use, which is pretty solid. It's like a 3600, but it doesn't have Gen 4 support, maybe just a little bit faster. Or on the Intel side of things, you could get a much better upgrade path for only $100. It is a pretty solid gaming CPU, but it's only got four cores and eight threads. I wanted something a little bit stronger for the $700 price range, so I went with the Ryzen 5 5600. This CPU is pretty awesome, but you are going to have to buy it used if you want that $100 price range. I found mine on eBay for around $100, but you can get them on AliExpress if you're willing to wait a couple weeks pretty regularly in that $100 price range. You can still find yours on eBay. They are being sold around $100 pretty regularly, but you are going to have to do some deal hunting in order to find that. Now to cool the CPU, we went with the tried and true ID Cooling SE214 XT. It's only $18 on Amazon. It comes with an RGB fan. We use the black one, not the white one. I don't know where the black box went. Now I did change out the fan on mine because I had some fans that someone had sent me. And so that's the fans we used in this build, but I'll talk more about that later. There are a lot of options for an AM4 motherboard. However, I wanted to go with a B550 model because I wanted the Gen 4 support for my SSD and later on if I wanted to upgrade my graphics card. Now you could go with a used motherboard if you're patient on eBay, you could find one probably even cheaper than what I paid for mine. However, again, you're gonna need to make sure you buy like from a trusted seller and it may take some time to find a good deal. But Amazon and Newegg run pretty good deals on their B550s from time to time. So I was able to snag my Asus model, micro ATX motherboard for only $90. Now we did nothing crazy here with the RAM. We just went with an all black kit from Oli, 16 gigabytes, 3,200 megahertz. It only cost us around $35. Just whatever price you can find that matches your color scheme, the speed's the most important thing there. You don't have to get the same brand as me. Just make sure you get at least 3200 megahertz if you're using AMD. Now this is one part that's probably not going to be a fan favorite. SSDs are getting crazy expensive. So we could only afford to do a 512 gigabyte SSD in this build. Now I don't play that many games, but you guys might. So if you need to spend an extra $30, you can and get a one terabyte SSD. For this build, 512 gigs is plenty and that keeps us in the $700 price range a little bit better. Our friends over at C-Sonic sent us a great power supply. 750 watts. Now, obviously it was sent to me for free, so I'm not gonna include that as a $0 in the build price because your guys at home can't do that. So I did budget around $100 for a power supply. Now, I think this specific Seasonic model cost a little bit more than that. So if you really wanna use a power supply for a really long time, I recommend Seasonic, they're awesome. But if you need to go a little bit cheaper, they do have some lower models that are around $100. Now a case can make or break a budget when it comes to PC building. You want it to look nice, but you also don't want it to eat up a lot of your budget because you know you want an awesome graphics card and a CPU. We were fortunate enough to find this B Gears case here on Amazon for only $51. Now, here's where the kicker comes in. This case does not come with fans. So again, our friends over at Seasonic had sent us some of their really nice Magflow fans and we put them in this case and they look really, really nice. However, they are pretty pricey, so you can get some other RGB fans if you would like to complete this $700 budget build. If you're like me in most builds, I like to just buy cases that already have fans installed in them and I'll link some of those down below. One of them is an Apivia case that looks almost very similar to this and it comes with five fans. I've used it before, it's pretty awesome. So I budgeted around $90 for a case and fans. Now, you could get a $60 case that comes with fans that's not exactly quite this fancy and use that other $30 for a one terabyte SSD and still stay around that $700 price range. Those are kind of your options. We also picked up some green and black cable extensions for $24 on Amazon and they look awesome. Now the graphics card market is a little crazy right now and we can only spend about $220 on our graphics card. That really limits you if you're gonna do a brand new graphics card to like the RX 6600 or the RX 7600 and that's pretty much your only two options that are worth buying. And if you wanna do that, that's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But we decided to go for a used GPU and we wanted to go team green Nvidia because everybody, you know, it's still got 85% of the market. We went with the RTX 2080 Super. On the used market, if you look at the eBay prices of what they're being sold at lately, you can get one around $200 to $220. 
It looks pretty awesome in this green and black build, so that's kind of where we designed the theme around. But if you wanted a different option, you could spend a little bit more money and get the RX 6700 XT. You can get those around $250 on the used market, and they're still a really solid GPU, probably a little bit better than the RTX 2080 Super. Let me know what you think about this PC build down in the comments, and let's hop into some benchmarks at 1080p and 1440p. If you like gaming PCs or benchmarks or want to know more about your FPS, how to get it, or what you're going to get when you get your PC, press that like and subscribe button because we do it every week over here at Matt Miller PCs. First up, we tried Valorant, a pretty easy to run game at 1080p and 1440p. We used pretty much high settings. We did turn a few settings off because they're deemed competitive because that's probably how most of you would play Valorant. And we pretty much saw the same numbers for 1080p and 1440p, and that was over 350 FPS, sometimes staying around 400, just really depend on what agent abilities were being used and all that stuff. In Fortnite, we tried it at 1440p and 1080p as well, but we decided to do performance mode on both of our tests because in previous videos, everybody always asked for performance mode. And since we're doing a whole PC and not just a graphics card, we decided to do performance mode. At 1440p on performance mode, we used the view distance on far, everything else on low, and we got close to that 240 mark. It would drop occasionally down to 180 FPS, but again, drops like that don't really bother me. Maybe it's because I'm a boomer, but I don't make a big deal out of drops down to like 180. That still feels really, really smooth. It doesn't bother me. But if you want to eliminate that, go to 1080p. We had almost no drops. When they did drop, it dropped to like 200 to 220. You're not going to notice that very much, especially if you cap your FPS at 240. On Apex Legends, we just played the gun run game mode at 1080p. We maxed out the settings and we got like 180 to 200 FPS. And at 1440p, on the same settings, we got like 140 to 150. You could definitely lower the settings and bump those FPS numbers way up if you wanted to. However, I just think Apex Legends looks really good at high settings. Also keep in mind this was only gun run game mode, so the gun run game mode you might get a little bit less FPS than you normally would in like the battle royale, but I don't really like the battle royale and it takes too long to benchmark so the gun run will just have to do. Now Starfield is pretty demanding, but it has gotten a lot better here recently when it comes to optimization. They've added the LSS, although we're not using it in this benchmark, but they have added it. At 1440p with no DLSS, on medium settings, we actually got a playable experience at around 65 FPS. And at 1080p on the same medium settings, we got like 85 FPS. Pretty awesome. And since we have an RTX card, we got to at least do one ray tracing test, and that was Cyberpunk 2077. We decided to go with the medium ray tracing settings. Normally on an RTX 20 series card, you're not going to get the best ray tracing experience. However, with the addition of DLSS, it does pretty good. At 1440p, we got around like 53-ish FPS on the built-in benchmark. And when running it at 1080p on the same settings, we got 65 FPS, again, with the built-in benchmark. Overall, I think the $700 PC is pretty awesome. But if you hate that I chose an NVIDIA graphics card and you want to see what you could get with something like an RX 6700 XT, then you should go watch this video.